Unless you're a musician, the concept of harmonics can seem like a mystery, especially in the context of the MCAT. In this video, we're going to define harmonics, demystify their equations, and practice applying these concepts on MCAT-style questions. Before we get started, let's go through some basic definitions of standing waves and harmonic terms. Harmonics are created from standing waves, which are patterns that form when waves are reflected back and forth through a medium, like a guitar string or the air column in a flute. Standing waves have specific points called nodes, where there is no movement, and antinodes, where there is maximal movement. The simplest or longest standing wave pattern is known as the fundamental frequency. This is where we just have one antinode and the longest possible wavelength or lowest frequency. Remember that wavelength and frequency are inversely related to each other. The wavelength refers to literally the length of the wave from crest to crest or from trough to trough. The frequency is how many waveforms we have in a given period of time. It's usually given in hertz or one over seconds. Frequency is inversely related to period, which again is the time it takes for one wave pattern to occur. Okay, so we have our basic picture of standing waves, including their descriptive terms. So what are harmonics? Harmonics are the level above the fundamental frequency, where we have multiple nodes and antinodes. When a musical instrument is played, let's say a guitar string is plucked, it vibrates and doesn't produce a single frequency. Instead, it produces a complex sound wave with layered frequencies, those harmonics, that are twice, three times, and four times that fundamental frequency. All right, so we have the basic idea down. We have the understanding of standing waves and harmonics and how they layer on top of each other with multiple frequencies. And that's pretty much all we need to know from a content perspective for the MCAT. Let's now dive in into a practice question to see how these concepts are applied. All right, here's our first practice question. Go ahead, pause this video, read through it, and give it a try. Okay, so the setup of this question is we have two pipes, one open and one closed. They're both one meter long, and we're asked about the ratio of the fundamental wavelength between these two pipes. So what is the wavelength in the open pipe at the fundamental frequency, and what is the wavelength at the closed pipe at the fundamental frequency or resonance? And then we'll take those two numbers and put it on a ratio. In order to do this question, we do need to understand and identify the equations that describe the relationship between the wavelength of the sound wave and the length of the pipe. So let's start by walking through those equations for each type of pipe. Let's start by visualizing the fundamental frequency, which is also the fundamental wavelength, in an open pipe or a string. So remember, it's got the longest wavelength, so it looks kind of like this, where we start our waveform cross in the center and end up at the bottom. And then of course these are reflected because these are standing waves, so they kind of cross back through. So a little messy, but you get the idea. And we have a single node here, right? And then our anti-node at the top here um, at the end of the pipe. So this fundamental frequency, if we follow along with the wavelength, remember that a wavelength is crest to crest or trough to trough. So check this out, we follow along, we go up on the crest, down into the trough, but we don't go back up, right? That would be a full wavelength is to go back up. So this is actually saying that the length of the pipe is one half wavelength. So basically at the fundamental frequency, all right, the fundamental frequency, number one, we have the length of whatever the pipe or the string or the tube is, if it's an open pipe, is going to be equal to one half of the wavelength of the sound wave or the light wave going through it. All right, we can rewrite that equation by, in terms of wavelength, by saying two times the length of the pipe is going to equal wavelength. So both equations say the same thing. It's just if you want to have everything be in terms of length or in, of the pipe or in terms of wavelength. So that is the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic in an open pipe and string. It's always going to be this equation. Now let's go to the second harmonic in a pipe. In our second harmonic, we're now increasing our frequency. So it's going to look like this, where we now have two nodes, right? Two nodes, one here and one here. And if we follow the wave shape, again, looking for how many wavelengths do we have, we go crest here, right? Down, up crest here. So this is one wavelength, all right, in this pipe. So the second harmonic in an open pipe string, open tube, is going to just be length equals wavelength. 
all right, length equals wavelength, uh, where we can say whatever the length of the tube is is equal to one wavelength, one waveform. Let's go to the third harmonic, where we're going to increase the frequency even more and end up with three nodes. Okay, so we can see here with my kind of messy drawing, one, two, three nodes. So same thing, we're going to see how many wavelengths are in this third harmonic in this Piper tube. We'll follow along. Crest, trough, crest, that's one trough, one and a half. So the length of the tube is equal to one and a half wavelengths or three half wavelengths. We want to keep it in a fraction. Or to rearrange it in terms of wavelength, two thirds of the length of the pipe will equal one wavelength. All right, so you can see how it's a pattern, right? There's a pattern between the harmonic and the relationship between the wavelength and the length of the tube. So higher harmonics will follow the same pattern. So we can look here that our first harmonic, we had one on the numerator, one to one. In our second harmonic, it was really two over two, right? Because that's just equal to one. So our numerator is two. In our third harmonic, our numerator was three for the wavelength. So our equation in general, if we wanted to put it as a variable, is length is equal to n over two wavelength where n is the harmonic number. So if we were at the fifth harmonic, L would be equal to 5 over 2 wavelength, right? So we can do this all the way down. All right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and look at the closed pipe equations. All right, in our closed pipe, what we mean by closed pipe is that one end of the pipe is closed, which we have visualized here. An interesting thing to note is that our ear counts as a closed pipe. It's open on one end, closed with the tympanic membrane uh, inside the ear. So our ear will display harmonics similar to closed pipe equations. All right, let's start again with our fundamental frequency or our first harmonic. Now things are a little different in the closed pipe. The way I like to think about it is that this kind of block, this kind of end, close end, kind of cuts off our wavelength a little bit. So our first harmonic looks like this, where we're really only getting the first quarter of a wavelength. Let's follow the wavelength all the way through to visualize that. We're going from our node up to our crest, down through a node, down through a trough, up through a node, back up through a crest. That would be Starting at this node here, that would be one wavelength, right? Node to node. But we're not even getting to that halfway point. We are only seeing a quarter of the wavelength, which means our equation here is length equals one quarter wavelength. All right, so for our fundamental frequency, our first harmonic in a closed pipe, we're only going to get a quarter wavelength in a given tube or pipe. All right, so the length of the tube is going to equal one quarter wavelength. The other funky thing about closed pipes is when we go up by harmonics, we don't go up one, two, three, four. We go up every other. So we go up by odd numbers. So our next harmonic in line is not the second harmonic, but the third harmonic. All right, and the third harmonic in a closed pipe looks like this. And again, we can follow to see up, down, not quite up again right? Almost there, but not quite. This is three quarters of a wavelength. All right, so we have L equals three quarter wavelength. So the length of this pipe at the third harmonic is going to be three quarters of the wavelength. Remember, we can always switch the equations around. So four times the length of the pipe at the fundamental frequency or fundamental wavelength is going to equal the wavelength. Um, and then we can flip this one as well, where four thirds of the length of the pipe is going to equal the wavelength at the third harmonic. All right, I'm sure you can see the pattern now. It's very similar to our pattern for the open pipe, but let's do our fifth harmonic here, right? Every other harmonic. So again, we can follow the wavelength up, down. Okay, one wavelength plus a little bit, plus a quarter. All right, so that's one and a quarter wavelengths or L equals five fourths wavelength. Right, and again, we can rearrange that equation to equal four fifths, the length of the pipe equals our wavelength. All right, so we can see a similar pattern, just slightly different, where our denominator is always four. We go up by fourths instead of by halves. And again, our numerator is going to correlate to our harmonic number, right? So our first harmonic, numerator is one, 
over four, third harmonic numerator is three over four wavelengths, and then our fifth harmonic is five over four wavelengths. So again, to make a general equation here, the length of the closed pipe is going to be equal to n over four wavelength when n refers to the harmonic. All right, so we have all of our equations that we could need. Let's go back to our question and answer it together. So for this question, again, remember that we're using a ratio of an open pipe to a closed pipe, right? And it's always important when you're doing ratios to write out the ratio as you're solving for it. So you remember to put the right numbers in the right spot. So we're looking for the wavelength. So we're going to solve for wavelength given the length of the pipe. So we have our equation for the fundamental frequency. Our first frequency of our open pipe is going to be equal to L equals one half wavelength or two L equals wavelength, right? So one meter long times two, that means that our wavelength is going to be equal to two meters. So that is our first part. And then our closed pipe is L equals one fourth wavelength, right, or rearranged four times the length of the tube is equal to wavelength. Again, it's still one meter according to the question stem, so we plug that in. Four meters equals wavelength. So now we have four meters as our second part of our ratio. Two meters to four meters, not our direct answer because we need to simplify. We can divide both sides of the ratio by two, so it becomes one to two. That answer gives us C. Great work on that question. We're now gonna see a question that's a little bit more involved. We have to do a little bit more math in order to get to the answer. Before we dive into that practice problem, I'm Amanda Brem and I've been coaching pre-med students on their MCAT journeys since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content, test-taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on test day. And if you'd like more interactive lessons on topics like this one, alongside personalized study planning and preparing for test day, please check out the link in the caption below, which will take you to our next available MCAT course. All right, pause this video and give this practice question a try. And as a little hint, you're going to need to convert between frequency and wavelength. Okay, this one's a little trickier, right? We've got a couple different things going on, so let's walk through the question stem together. An electromagnetic laser forms a standing wave pattern in a tube. So electromagnetic, remember, now we're in the world of light. So standing waves can be formed by both sound and light. That can be described by the equation m wavelength equals 2l, where m is the mode number, wavelength is the wavelength, and l is the length of the tube. Okay, so this looks awful similar to the open pipe or string equation that we just saw in our previous question, right? Because we have wavelength equals 2L. So I'm thinking like open pipe fundamental frequency vibes. If the tube is one third meters long, okay, so we have the value for L, which is going to be L equals one third. I'm gonna leave it as a fraction for now to see if that's the easiest way to use it or if I need to convert to a decimal, I'll do so. And the frequency of the electromagnetic wave is nine times 10 to the 14 hertz, which is one over seconds. So I always like to write it as one over seconds because that's how I'll be canceling my units. All right, so here's the issue here, right? We're asked what the mode number is, but in order to find the mode number, we need to find the wavelength. And we weren't given wavelength, we were given frequency. So is there any way, especially when we're referring to light, to convert between wavelength and frequency. If you've thought of this equation, C equals frequency times wavelength, you are absolutely correct. C, or speed of light, is a constant that we are expected to know for testing. It's three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Now, if this question was referring to sound waves, they would probably give us the speed of sound because the speed of sound is a lot more variable in given conditions. However, just for your notes, the speed of sound in air is around 330 meters per second. Much, much, much slower than light. All right, so we have our constant that wasn't provided to us but is something we're expected to know for test day. And so we can rearrange this equation to be, okay, speed of light over frequency equals wavelength. That will allow us to solve for wavelength, and then we'll be able to plug those numbers in to solve for the mode number. So let me go ahead and make this a little smaller, give myself some room to do the math. All right, let's do some calculations. We have three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. 
We can divide that by 9 times 10 to the 14, 1 over seconds, right? Which is going to then cancel out our seconds. We'll end up with meters on the top. I personally like to divide my mantissas, my big numbers in the front, separately from my exponents. So 3 divided by 9 is 1 third, all right? And then when I divide exponents, we subtract them. So 8 minus 14 is 10 to the negative 6. This is going to be in meters because we are again solving for meters in wavelength. So now we have our wavelength, we have our length of our tube. So there's two different ways you can do this. You can rearrange this equation first to solve for m and then plug the numbers in. That's what I'm going to do. Or you could plug the numbers in first, rearrange uh, to find m separately. So we're going to do 2L over wavelength equals m. And then we have 2 times 1 third over 1 third times 10 to the negative 6 equals m. OK, this math here is a little messy. So I'm going to show you how I do the math. If you can do this in your head and take some additional shortcuts, please feel free to do so. I'm just going to show you my full version, which reduces silly mistakes or calculation errors. So 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. And then it's 10 to the 0, right? just to have an exponent as a placeholder, divided by 1 third times 10 to the negative 6. Now I can very clearly see that I'm going to get you know, something going on with my mantissa and then um, a very specific number as my exponent. Looking at the answer choices, see how all of my exponents are different, but my mantissas are the same. They're either 2 or 3, but all four of my exponents are different numbers. So if I just solve for the exponent, I should be able to get to the right answer. They're different enough that um, I should be able to find the answer pretty quickly. So I'm going to do my exponent first. So 10 to the 0 uh, divided by 10 to the negative 6. When you divide exponents right, you subtract. So 0 minus minus 6 is 10 to the 6. So my exponent here would be 10 to the 6. Oh, look at that. Only one answer is 10 to the 6. A. It's got to be A. But we could, of course, double check. The way we do division by fractions is you multiply by the reciprocal. So we do 2 thirds multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator times 3 over 1. The 3's cancel, and we're left with 2 over 1, which just equals 2. So again, there's a couple different ways uh, to approach the math on the MCAT. For me personally, I like to do a lot of setup and then eliminate based on the answer choices that are provided to me. All right, and that was two different MCAT style questions on harmonics on the MCAT, one for sound and one for light. Let me know how you did in the comments below. And if this video was helpful for you, please remember to share it with your pre-med community so we can all support each other as we work towards our goals. Happy studying, and I'll see you in the next video.